Okay, so I know it's been forever since we've played this game. Um, God, it's been forever since I've uploaded one of them because I've been so stupid busy. But we'll get there. I'm gonna get there. Yeah, just so you know, I beat that button and get up. But anyways. Okay. I, <laughs> I will get there eventually. Um, hi. Welcome to Thyfall Presents Dragonlance, Shadow of the Dragon Queen. Um, we're missing one of our friends for now because scheduling is hard and everyone has real jobs. Good for them, I guess. Uh, <laughs> we're also recording an hour earlier, so I'm a little tired. Um, hi. hi. Yeah, hi. Welcome. Um, last time on Dragonlance Z, we went to a place known as Wheel Watch Outpost to reclaim it. Uh, for the Kalamon military after it had been taken by the Red Dragon army. Um, it went super well. well. It went super well. We may have arrested... I think, you, I think w the quote from you is it was the worst scenario that was in the thing? Uh, yeah, I think you, you possibly went about it in the worst way possible, but that's okay. Great. Uh, you know, we th we threw one of our own friends into prison, uh, Razik. Mm. <laughs> I think it went pretty well. <laughs> and then he had there. to break out of said prison during an active combat situation. Um, and then we fought everyone. We battled it and killed calculated. everything, uh, as far as we can tell, before having the ability to open the Wheel Watch Outpost doors where Derrett Highwater and some of the Kalamon military uh, that were uh, dispatched this way were able to join us. Uh, that's that's kind of where we're at, is in the immediate aftermath of that situation. You may notice on our characters' overlays that they have leveled up already. It's so we don't have to waste time doing that later. So they're level 6 right now, but still all very, very hurt. In addition to that, boy oh boy, is it still... A miserable stormy day. Night? Night. We waited for night. Great. Wheel Watch Outpost is open. The creaking and clanking of the winch as you were able to open it there. And Derrett Highwater with uh, roughly 20 soldiers in tow would be making their way inside to what is the bloody and muddy battlefield that you all left behind. The door is open. Derrett comes charging in with his, his folks and friends expecting a battle of some sort. And there is only quiet and blood. He will lower his sword as he enters with the rest of the contingent here. And I thought you would be leaving us uh, something to do. Raina is like sitting in on one of the steps leaning against her sword, just letting the rain make almost just the blood fall to the ground. Just didn't mean to steal your thunder, but things kind of took a turn huh. for the worse. Oh yeah, we could have used you guys, huh? Whoops. Yeah, he looks around and looks at you all and he's... Medics, please, uh, can you see to them? And you know, Two of the, uh, the contingent will just like move up. And if you allow them, they'll at least do bandaging for you, which doesn't necessarily help you so much in this way, but, like, they will begin to help you close the wounds that are all over your various bodies. Um, as this is happening over here, we left off with, um, up on the, the stairwell to our eastern side there at the very top. Uh, we had met an Elgo, uh, duck ditcher. A, uh, a Kender woman who, uh, had been also trapped here. And I believe, Razik, you had just been seeing to them when we Yeah, didn't she, didn't, didn't she go down or something, or? <laughs> yeah, she's currently unconscious. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, so I, I think I did a medicine check, if I remember right, didn't I, to- To stabilize, stabilize. her. Mm -hmm. So yeah. she's unconscious in the rain, but stable. Um, okay, well, I guess if, I see we're next to like a little guard or a, a tower. Can I just yeah. at least try and drag her inside? You want to just drag her inside out of the rain? <laughs> Absolutely. Don't, don't yeah. worry, I've got, I've got you. You'll, you'll be fine. She goes, eh, I'm unconscious. Uh, 
Inside this small area here, this is actually where Elgo sprinted off to during the battle to find their Hoopak, their weapon, um, their Kender weapon there. And so, yeah, you just see, like, rows and rows of weapons and things, uh, bows, axes, spears, and otherwise shields and things like that, uh, that are just in this area. But you do drag her out of the rain. Uh, do you want to rejoin the party here, or do you just want to stay out of the rain and wait? Um, no, I guess, I guess I'll rejoin the party and, okay. um... We leave her out of the yeah. rain, and then come out, and then go trotting down the steps off to join the party once again. Derek will give you a, a nod as you make your way over there, and he goes, Who was, um, up there? Uh, I'm not really sure. She was trapped in the prison with me when, um, when I was taken inside, and, well, I, I helped her escape, and she, she joined in. Well, She's a kender. I don't know if you, you expected anyone else inside, or... He shakes his head, water spilling off of it. Is she all right? Uh, she's a bit injured, um, and she's a bit unique. Um, <laughs> she kept <laughs> insisting that the, uh, the, the captain, I think, was her, was her cousin or brother or something. Uh, she part of the dragon army? I don't think so. I'm, <laughs> I don't know if she was just having him on, or... If she actually believed it, or... All right. I don't um, know. Medics, your, please, one of you, and go see her, and, and don't go trotting off this direction through the mud to go help Elgo. Uh, yeah, and he looks about the battlefield. All right, men, secure the rooms, and, um, I suppose, uh, does anyone have the key for... He looks up at the gate controls. The key for the gate controls, all right. Um, but yeah, they'll they'll start like stationing themselves around and out uh, towards the walls, kind of secure the area here. Uh, Derrett looks about and he goes, "You know of anywhere that's potentially dry, out of the way, and maybe where we can discuss next moves?" Yeah, well, there's the prison cell I was in over there, or there's the the prison tower cell. up there. You can go inside. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, no. There was a big thing that came out of that, pointing big at the, thing. uh, where oh, yeah, the, and then the dragon you, you, came out of. He pointed the, like, the body of the dragon at the bottom yeah. there. Yeah, and he was, gods. He'll walk that direction. Do you know what this is? Um, uh, would we know what it is? Uh, you've heard the, the word a couple of times now. Um, which would I be is... able to nature it? <laughs> yeah, it's a a dragon L. So like um, not like a full dragon, but like a a minor dragon. Not closer a baby, to, but closer a to wyvern. Kind of yeah, 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 exactly. Closer mm. to like something like a wyvern. Um, but they would be known as a dragon L. And we've heard that word a couple of times in like just in passing, as well as in reports. Um, so this is that thing. And as a bit brief reminder about the creature, uh, it, you know, was able to do a good amount of, like, fire damage and things to you, and it was pretty dangerous. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we killed him and the rider. Probably for the best. Okay. Dare it. We'll look around the battlefield, and seeing it now mostly secured. Well, don't suppose you had time to investigate anything? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Reyna gets off from her seat. I suppose this would be the best time to rummage through things. <laughs> right, yes. Um, if you have the energy for it, let's start taking a look around. Going to make sure the men have things secured, but go on then. And he's going to go, you know, off doing captain-y things. Um, he will be joined by the other prisoner at the time, uh, Lano Brint, uh, who will be making his own report to Derrett while you do some investigating around. Where would you like to can, begin? Yeah, go ahead. I was, I was, I was going to say, can is there a way to, like, examine the dragonelle and see if like 
it was more held against its will or if it was actually consciously cooperating with them sure uh you could attempt to do that i would i would give you a couple of options here um i think investigation or medicine will tell you enough about perhaps the body right in the way that it was being used to, to give you a, a good idea mm -hmm. um otherwise nature might help if you have any experience with you know draconics of this kind but i don't know if anyone really does yet probably not so yeah i need Svartal if you want to like make your way over there and be like hey was this animal being held against their will was it being utilized yeah you know? it'd be it'd be more i'd be more using my animal knowledge and being like does this do, do these whatever wounds it might have do they sure. look like they were there were battle wounds or were they like yeah, all trying right. to control want, so nature or medicine all right i'll do medicine either one 13 13 uh most of the wounds that uh, you know being said there um were created by the weapons that you and your friends wield uh during the battle it is armored it does have a saddle um and the way that you like look at the wear on the creature uh it looks like it was well accustomed to being ridden as well as having the armor placed atop it um you can see the like enhanced musculature of its various parts to carry the additional weight um but it definitely looks more like the same type of wear and care that you would see from someone with a like a war horse okay so more akin to uh, the usage of a horse than you know uh some other kind of like sentient creature Right. So it wasn't necessarily enslaved, but it was... Yeah, a tool utilized. of war. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I see Svartle looking at it, and I murmur while holding, like, I'm, like, leaning on a spear. I am beat up. Like, I don't think... I don't even think Svartle has seen uh, Ravenna so, like, messed up. Uh, no. And she just mumbles monstrous beast but they ride them as if they were merely horses mhm mm imagine great. if they had a whole full army of these I shudder at the thought. We hear Brianna's boots squelching up behind you, and I believe I had 10 points of lay on hands left, because I think I sure. did like halvesies for somebody, and then I saved some just mm -hmm. in case. So I'm going to split that pool between me and Ravenna, and just okay. pump five each, and just give us a little, little something. Yeah. <laughs> something just, that staunched the worst just, of the wounds. Yeah, you just see her, she's like leaning hardcore on her glaive and then you kind of see her like it like kind of lessens a little bit she kind of just she just sighs <sighs> thank you thought oh, well you took on many <sighs> i couldn't hold my own unfortunately you're still standing i beg to differ gives you like a <laughs> slight pat not like a hard one she, we're both like knock like, you over she, she's kind of like you never really you never see her like flinch normally she's just really like you know i could take it but you kind of see her go oh sorry sorry <laughs> during this this brief kind of interlude um razik are you doing any investigating of the battlefield are you helping with elgo what's what's on the plan for you um, well, I remember there was the, wasn't there a wee desk in the prison cell? Um, is, yes. So I would like to um, go and have a wee look at that if I can. Yeah, go peruse the desk. Yeah, the, mm, uh, the yes. cell up here on the, uh, the northwestern side of the courtyard. Uh, a brief description once again, just because it's been so long since we have played this game. Uh, the prison here uh, does have a small desk. This is where Ardalic Vance, the captain, the Dragon Army officer, was seated at the time. And it seemed that he was writing report at the time of the entry. Additionally, behind him is the uh, 
the two jail cells uh, that we unfortunately ended up inside of, but, you know, made our way out. Yes, there is a desk here, uh, and perusing through it, go ahead and roll an investigation. 14's not a bad. 14, Joel. Yeah. The papers on the desk, you can see uh, as you try to dry your hands before handling any of the delicate papers, uh, include what look to be Commander Vance's daily reports, as, long as, uh, as well as orders to hold wheel watch at all costs, signed by the Dragon Highmaster and Saldi Fire Eyes. Inside one of the desk drawers, there's also a Thieves' Tools set that is uh, monogrammed on the leather with E.D., and 200 gold pieces in a pouch. Okay. Um, well, I'll take, I, I will take the, the gold pieces and the thieves' tools, uh, Joel. Um, but I don't want to remove the, the documents and take them out into the rain. Um, Probably wise. But after I've seen them, I, I would go out and um, let Darrett know what I found and if he wants to have a look at them. Yeah, so you just, like, you call the dare and be like, hey, come on in, take a look, and he'll trot on yeah. over, come inside, and... All right, what'd you find? Uh, well, it seems like uh, a number of reports written about the the people stationed here and their orders and things like that. I think, I think you might call it military intelligence. Is that right? He'll, you know, <laughs> again, <laughs> tries to dry his hands off a little bit before pawing through it and... Hey, this would be that. Hold at all costs. High Master Consoldi Fire Eyes. Hmm. It matches some reports that we've gotten back at the council. I've heard that this Consoldi seems to be uh, in charge of the greater part of the Red Dragon Army. Don't know much more about them, though. Did you find anything else? Uh, just some, I guess, oh, well, I'll be honestly down at a thousand gold, but, um, I mean, I can share it amongst you and all the troops if you like, but, uh, you know, finders keepers, maybe? He looks up at you and kind of puts a finger in an ear. Sorry, didn't hear that. And we'll take a step back outside. Um, yeah, and he'll, you know, continue with his, his work here. He'll call back to you, like, see if you can't find anything in the barracks or perhaps... Elsewhere. All right. Uh, well, I guess I'll try and find where the barracks is. I guess. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, so, so for we did note kind of that location during our brief investigation uh, before all hell broke loose. Uh, it would be up past where the weapons are being held, kind of um, up and inside. There's also each of these towers to investigate and take a look at as well. There's also the doors that are just directly next to our friends still sitting in the rain for a room we don't even know of yet. And there's a small outbuilding towards the south as well. There's quite a lot of different places to take a look at. Um, and you can do so with uh, specificity if you'd like to, or we can kind of just do like a general, uh, we roll investigation and, and see what we find. Up to you on how detailed you'd like to be. Well, I mean, I guess I'll look for the barracks first. Um, see what's there. Sure. Uh, going over to and up the stairs on the far side, and then back up in, you would see that Elgo is being taken care of and has been given what seems to be at least one little health potion. And so she is now happily chattering away with the medic next to her. When you arrive, she sees you enter, and she goes, Oh, hi. Oh, that was... That was... Quite the row, wasn't it? Oh, good fun, that. Did you have a good time? Uh, I, um, I wouldn't say I had a great time, but I'm just, I'm glad we, we got through it without well, any serious Good is better injury. than bad. It doesn't have to be great all the time, but it was pretty great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, She's I'm like a little bit confused. Holding like, a honestly. wound in her side still and just smiling. Who, who exactly are are you? I'm Helgo Dutchdicker. Uh, didn't we? Didn't we meet? Um, yes, but I mean, how were you captured? Uh, 
feel like we've had this conversation before, but perhaps it was the knocks upon my head that made me forget. Um, I came here, demanded entry, because I had need to explore this place, and then they That's took right. me in, and my cousin threw me directly into a cell. That flannel. Was he you, know. uh, you met him. Was he really your cousin? Hi, my cousin Flannel. I th I'm, I'm afraid, well, he. I think he is dead. Um, uh, I have plenty of cousins. Family's really big. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I appreciate your help uh, and everything. Um, I, was, I think I might have something that belongs to you. Um, oh? And I'll take the, the thieves' tools that I found um, yeah. and return them. Yeah, she picks up the satchel. My tools! Oh, cousin, it is so good that you found these and returned it to me. <laughs> Wait, hang, hang on. <laughs> what? When do you say someone's a cousin? What do you? What do you mean? You're is my it, cousin now. Wanna... I've adopted you into the family. <laughs> Welcome. You are now a duck ditcher. I mean, I, I, I appreciate the sentiment, but. Uh... I, I don't think I'm... I'm not quite looking to be adopted, I suppose. What do you mean? Your family too big already? Well, well... No, but... I'm not really... I'm not really looking to join a, another family, I guess. Well, you know... Generally, <laughs> you can't choose who your blood related to. <laughs> I know that, but... I mean, this <laughs> is... Sorry, I'm just a so bit... So, cousin, this, unfortunately, this... we are related. <laughs> I... I feel like it's probably easier just to agree with you than... Okay. <laughs> is it is it a cultural thing, maybe? Like, do you, do you, do you call your close friends cousin or something? I don't know. Perhaps I have many cousins. Normally, I find my cousins all over the world where I travel. It's good to have good family everywhere. I suppose I I can imagine it comes in handy. She's like looking you up and down. What would you call Razik's most prominent feature? Uh, I mean, his horns are Captain Bronze, so it's probably mm -hmm. that. Um, I imagine the sword on his back is also a little mm -hmm. bit unique looking, like kind of runes inscribed on it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. She's, like, looking you up and down. You see that she's trying to pick something on you, right? Like, she's trying to settle her eyes on a piece of you. Um, do you want to, like, turn in any which way to present something to her that she would notice first? <laughs> That's a strange question. It is. <laughs> I do not know. I don't think so. No, I don't, I don't know what's about to happen. I don't know. <laughs> And she stops, and then she just, she'll look at your horns and looks back at you. Cousin Horny! <laughs> Excuse me? Hi, Cousin Horny. Welcome to the family. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Cat's dying. <laughs> uh, maybe, uh, maybe I should just leave you to recover a little bit until you're... Oh, I'm right, bit, it's right. <laughs> Let me just get... Uh, and she'll stop, and she there's like a gush of blood from her side. She's, Perhaps you're right, Cousin Horny. I will be sitting here for just a little longer. Hey, you, medicine man, get me another one of those bandage things. So Cousin <laughs> Horny, uh, the barracks seem to be just off of this hall. Well, I, I, will, I will go to the barracks and... Yeah. See if I can focus on some good old investigations to take my mind <laughs> off that. Yeah, there's a, a soft lantern light that dimly outlines six of these two-level sets of bunks. Um, it's a modest barracks. Footlockers sit beneath each set of bunks. Um, well, I guess I'll start looking through the footlockers, Joel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, a quick search of each of these here, you would find there's just like regular day-to-day -day clothes in each of them for each person that would be in these bunks, so about 12 sets of that. Uh, and then each bunk also has 10 gold pieces, or excuse me, each locker has 10 gold pieces in it as well. Um, so it's uh, 60 total on that. One Foot Locker also oh. contains a silvered longsword, 
and another contains the holy symbol of Tachesis on uh, an amulet-type chain. There's also an additional key for the gate controls. I'm finding all the loot. Indeed. Sorry, I'm just adding this. Yeah, of course. And as you do tally these things, we'll bounce back outside to our very wet party. Having healed up just a little bit, Razik seems to be making his reports to Derrett and otherwise. What do you all want to do? You want to join Razik in his investigative search from room to room there, or is there a, perhaps a different place you would like to go? I will walk over to... Is Razik still by the bunks? Razik did go up to the bunks, yes. Okay, I will hobble my way over to the bunks and say... What are you looking for? I don't know, just that any anything interesting, I suppose. And as, as he's talking, she sits down on the bunk and then lays her <laughs> as he's talking. Mm -hmm. oh. Time for a nap. <laughs> and she she then like closes her eyes, but then looks back at him. What are you looking for? Uh, I mean, just clues or information or anything relevant. <laughs> I see. Report back if you find anything. And then she like tilts her head back like, uh. uh. Yeah, take a little nap. <laughs> <laughs> take a little nap. She is beat up. Yeah. She has six hit points. So she is, uh, she is resting. <laughs> but, sure. still, but still trying to make sure she's like checking it. <laughs> Basically, start like start what you would call a, a short rest. You're bandaging up and 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 taking maybe a nap or something like that. Um, for the rest of of the party outside, however, Throttle, you would after investigating the the dragon here. Do you want to investigate where it was staying as well, or would you have gone yeah. with your sister? Yeah, that's okay. where he 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 probably would have gone in there to hang out. He doesn't really pilfer through things, but mm -hmm. he would go he would go into the, yeah the stables and kind of just look around. Sure. No, Rain is pilfering. Rain is going Rain with the pilfering. pilfering paladin. Let's go. Okay. The pilfering paladin. I love it. Uh, here, I'm going to just remove these walls here because it makes it a little bit easier for you Sure, Spartle. There's a lot of hay. <laughs> 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 yeah, so looking in, inside the, the stable here, there's definitely filled stalls and supplies for horses. Uh, but the, sta the stable stinks of large animals and blood more specifically from the ground being covered with these scattered skeletons of two horses. Okay, that's a red flag. Um, so so there's no way that this Dragonelle was living in here? Or, or that they were and it was bad? You can roll another nature if you'd like to. Yeah. I'm more worried about the Dragonelle than anything. I'm noticing. Nice. Very good. The Dragonelle was absolutely living in here, and these horses were fed to it. There would be scores and pockmarks along what remains of the flesh and into the bone, where you can see various large, sharp teeth marks uh, pocking uh, many of the, the bones there. It's quite clear that it was being kept in the central portion, uh, the central stall there. At the time, you can see what looks to be uh, droppings that differ from what you would find in your larger horse type animals as well as um, What it seems that it shed There'd be some scales uh, dried flesh and things like that as it had like rubbed itself on the walls of the chamber there to uh, Scrape off its excess skin That's when you gotta ask if it's really cost-effective to own a dragon. Yeah, exactly <laughs> You're you had to feed horses. it two horses. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm like that's uh. you really gotta know like. <laughs> So, I mean, so how big are these stalls compared to the dragon owl? Uh, they'd be a, about right. Uh, they are sized for horses, which are large creatures. The dragon mm -hmm. owl would likely have kept its wings folded in most of the time. Not really a lot of room to stretch those. Uh, but the dragon owl itself, like its body without the wings, is technically smaller than a horse. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So it would be appropriately sized, if not well sized if they had moved any of the walls and things out of here it would have been yeah. stretch a little more but yeah you said like a like a wyvern like roughly the same size as a wyvern mm -hmm. then yeah pretty much okay all right fair enough um 
All right, then one last thing. I would look through all the like the uh, the doors and any windows if there are any, and to see if there are any uh, any markings or uh, signs of struggle and escape. Uh, none. There would be no signs of struggle and or escape. You would see that there would definitely be some like teeth marks and bridles that are hanging on the walls where the uh, dragon owl was probably just gnawing on stuff. Um. But it doesn't seem to be in any, like, aggressive get-me-out-of-here kind of manner, but more like, mm. again, an animal that's just messing with things in the place that it's staying. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, bones that have been gnawed on, things of that nature. Alright, that's pretty much all Swartle cares about. So. I think, yeah, the one, you know, the guards that are in here, they're kind of, like, picking through this and, like, poking with spears at the bodies, look up at you. Mr. Swartle, have you seen anything like this? Big old leathery creature out there, and then... It ate two horses. Yeah, weird. I don't know, never seen it. I've seen lots and lots of animals. It's kind of strange, but, um... It seems like they treated it pretty well, so... They're all right, I guess. We treated, I guess they did feed it horses and kind of like poke around. He's like, oh, hey, yeah, it, like a horse. Do you think they have more of those? You know, like we have horses. Do you think they have full contingents of mounted whatever reptilian riders? Yeah, probably. I don't see why not. His eyes get very, very wide. That's probably okay? not good, huh? Eh, it's fine. We took that one out. No offense, Mr. Swartle, but that's just one. Eh. And eh. you, as big and strong as you are, he kind of like looks and gestures to the many wounds covering your body. <laughs> Seem to have done you quite a number. What does that mean? You're hurt. Real hurt. To who? Who? What? Um, he looks down and points at the ground where you're still actively bleeding onto the floor. Eh, uh, it's not my blood anyway. Then it's the world's blood. It's, it's coming, but it's coming from, it's coming from a wound under your ribs there. Um. Listen, listen. The earth will bring it, will give it back to me. It'll be okay. Okay, Mr. Svartal. Eh. Uh. And they'll go back to poking about in the room. Uh, Reyna, we left you out here all alone. <laughs> what do you want to do? Oh, I went with we're, we're ignoring Talonor being here. He's not here. Talonor died. Don't I went him. with Svartal. You went with Svartal? Oh, okay. Is there anything that you would want to do in, in the room as well then? Honestly, I was just more intrigued to see what a space of like what a dragon L lived in. So kind of very much the same as uh, was Svartal, but honestly, uh, I stepped in expecting to do a lot of investigating and then watch just kind of Svartal do it. It was just far more entertaining. Yeah. So I just kind of sat there. <laughs> you're, like you look at it, you're like, you know what? Maybe there's more than meets the eye to the big guy here, huh? His, he his knowledge really of care. nature is really good. In fact, can I, can I roll like some type of check to see like, cause I'm more interested now in like Svartal, like, like what is he doing? What is his intent? Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to piece together what's going okay, through his sure. head. Uh, Svartal, is it cool for Reyna to make a, an, an insight check on you? Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. A 17. What would a 17 get Reyna noticing during Svartal's investigation? Uh, you would see what I was looking at. Like, you'd see like, um... I'd be sort of sizing up the room a little bit. Um, I'd be looking at like the the doorways and the door jams and at the windows and sort of uh, you, you kind of see me like lining stuff up to where you might notice that I'm I'm check like I'm look it's like I'm looking at a new house and making sure that everything's cool you know like I'm, <laughs> I'm you know nothing's broken nothing's nothing's leaking anywhere I'm, I'm eyeballing the place. So would she get, like, the intent? Which, what we've seen, like, on our side is, like, the intent is to see, was the Dragon Elm mistreated? Like, would she be picking up that yeah. they were looking for the living conditions of the Dragon Elm, that they were acceptable? 
Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think um, it, the the face would be very intriguing as I'm looking, and then afterwards going, hmm, all right. Okay. Yeah, so it seems, Reyna, that Svartal didn't come in here to necessarily investigate the Dragonelle or what it is or its capabilities, but more, did the Dragonelle have a living space adequate for it? Svartal. Yeah. Do you care for these creatures, for the creature that we just felled? Care for all creatures. You see kind of like this smile smirk on Reyna's face. But no. Yeah, it's no. I mean, I, if it was treated wrongly, then it'd be easy to get them on our side, but it seems like it was treated pretty well, so all right. You know, for a big lug, you, you kind of have a soft side to you, huh? Mm, I don't know what that means. In due time. In due okay. time. Pet, pet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll reveal that soft underbelly yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, absolutely. Uh, as you guys kind of maybe return back to the outside, uh, in continuing your investigation, Razik, elsewhere, would you be leaving and going back out as well? Yeah, just... I've just pressed auto explore basically in the fort, and I'm... Wherever Understood. I'm Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll 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 get to that part. Uh, Ravenna, are we we're full napping? You're gonna have to wake her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, so. Let me roll my hit dice too. Okay. Uh, oh, so it takes an hour. So with everyone else like doing work and things, you're gonna oh. hold on that for. Until, okay, I can hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But she she is passed out. You will have to poke the bear. Mm. Mm. Razik, do you choose to poke the bear? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> awesome. Absolutely. Um, as you leave, though, Razik, you would note that the um, the medic would have placed Elgo in, like, one of the opposite bunks from Ravenna to, like, rest and recuperate. You head I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Say as you head outside, uh, there would be the sound of galloping hooves, a horse arriving at the north side of of the area here, quickly leaning down and handing a secured scroll to Darrett, uh, as well as saying something to him during the storm. Darrett will give him a nod, and then the messenger will immediately turn heel and make their way out once again. Uh, Darrett will kind of be like, Those of you available, don't mind heading into somewhere dry. See what this says. He'll go off back to the small office slash prison. Uh, for those of you that may want to join him there. Yeah, I guess I'll follow. You guess, huh? That's right with you, Joel. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. Svartal, Reyna. I'm just going to... Uh, yeah. Putting Talonor in jail. <laughs> Where he belongs. <laughs> Talonor goes to jail. Uh, Yeah, so he would come in here again, kind of like trying to get his hands dry and unroll the scroll here, and it would be a very short message from the marshal. Um, it would be instructions, and he would read it out loud to you here, instructions for uh, that reinforcements would be arriving in the morning to help secure the location, uh, and that Darrett is to return immediately uh, for a new mission. There is no made mention of you all uh, in that or need of you there, but apparently Darrett is needed back at Kalamon as quickly as possible. Do you think the messenger would have given you his horse at least then if we needed back so quickly? Yeah, he, he looks at you and says, Oh, we've got the horses. They're just up on the ridge. You remember? All right. Um, so I'll just um, be doing that. Seems that I'm not going to be getting any rest this night then. Is there anything less that you need of me before I head out? Did we did we kind of know that he was sort of being set up to fail here, or necessarily right. set up to fail here? But he did ask for you specifically to assist him, just in case. Remember, there's been this whole thing uh, about um, oh goodness, Lord uh, Bakaris, who mm -hmm. has kind of taken up his seat on the council at Kalaman, uh, elected to give Darrett a command, and had 
we kind of get this feeling because Bakaris has never been really nice is probably preying on Darrett's downfall right. in some yeah, way. Right, yeah, that's, that's what I was If wondering. not, like, we, we for maliciousness, that, right? but, like, just because he's an asshole. Right? right. Okay. Yeah. We, we are aware so, that yeah. that is a thing. All right. So, as he starts to go back, uh, uh, Sprite will give him a pat on the back and say good luck. Thanks, big man. Um, hopefully we'll be seeing each other soon. I'll leave a uh, and- word for you on where we're going uh, at your quarters. Coleman. Darren, can I just go and have that sending stone we uh, we lent you before you go? Oh, yes, of course. Here you go. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm sure One it's last question. property. Correctly. <laughs> yes. One last question above table before he takes off. He's Is he going alone? Uh, he would likely round up some of the folk that are here and go with them. Cool. Um, and the there's people a larger... that have been... Hmm? Well, the people that have been with us, the the general feel of them. Do we do we trust the general group that was sent along Most with us? Most like, everyone that has come with you are volunteers from Vogler. Okay, okay. All right. Right? That, so they're no like worries. the recent trainees and volunteers from Vogler. So like they're his people Okay. Uh, that were sent to do this. Now there's reinforcements coming from Kalamon in the morning, right? Per, like actual military members to secure the location. Uh, but at this point, this, like, outriding group that you were a part of was mostly volunteers from Vogler. Cool, cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Derek will, like, grab a couple of them, uh, and they will make their way back up to the, the ridge for him to leave. And that, yeah, they'll just, they'll go. Bye, Derek. It's been real. <laughs> Would you like to consider, continue the auto-explore button? Or the location. Yes. All right. Auto explore <laughs> button. It's like using the hint. <laughs> yeah. Can we just? Yeah, I would like to purchase a hint <laughs> of a can, location. You can absolutely do that if you buy me food. I will definitely. <laughs> you can purchase hints. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's just kind of go through some of these things here. The, each of the towers are rather bare stone fortifications. Uh, at the bottom, they would have a bit of storage, and then at the tops, obviously, the crenellations and things like that, and they are covered to prevent any of the rain or otherwise from getting into that there. But there's nothing really there to uh, use or gain from that during your investigation. So I'm just going to kind of leave that to the side. But for the rest of this, I would love investigation checks from each person that is participating in this. Yeah. It's so an 18 for me. Nice, nice, nice. Ten. That's an insight, but that's okay, Svartle. Oh. Whoops. I don't expect Svartle to know word. So, Probably 18 not. and 16, <laughs> pretty good anyways. Um, there are a couple of things that we would find. Uh, one is going to be in the bottom uh, portion of the uh, the area here. This little room, you would note that the two guards kind of like come out of it. It is just a very small room. I'm going to actually just remove the walls for this. Screw it. We're going to just take those out. It's a kitchen. It would have been a six, by the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love that for you. Um, yeah, so in inside here is just a, a, a kitchen. Um, it would, looks like inside where uh, they were making some kind of stew. It's still Some of it still sticks and remains in the black iron pots on the, the fire there. Um opposite the table covered in cutlery and scrawny carrots uh, is this, are these two pots that are just on a, on a cold stove now. Inside, uh, it seems that there was a bit of a watery soup that is heavy on the pepper being prepared, and two rather nice salt and pepper shakers? They seem to have been leveling, lovingly carved to resemble black and white dragons. Picking those up or leaving them? I put salt and pepper shakers. Yeah, they're oh. little dragon salt and pepper shakers. Take, take it. Okay. This must be a uh, where they make the armor and stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> um. Yeah the uh, the last real room here that we would see is going to be uh, the double doors on the western side 
Uh, it's been mostly quiet. No one's really gone in there yet. Who would want to open the doors? I suppose I'll open them, Joel. Oh, <laughs> sounds good. Let's you didn't ask who wants to open the last door. So why is it uh, important that we decide Yeah, because it's important for this one, because this one's occupied. Ah. Inside is oh, what sorry, looks to be a, a soldier <laughs> lying on the floor of a storage room. The room, the storage room's barrels contain what seem to be food, water, and other supplies for the outpost here. And there is also a man lying on the floor, um, unconscious, it seems. He's not wearing lying any of the Dragon the Army arm. insignias or anything like that, uh, but seems to probably have been a Kalamon soldier. Oh. Um... I guess I'll walk in and is he is he just asleep or uh yeah if you want to roll a medicine check uh, take sure a, take a closer look yeah 12. So 12 seems to be un unconscious but you can't really tell why do you want to try shaking him awake I guess I guess I'll gently shake him and excuse me hello uh, uh, who's, who's that who's that rolled around Eyes rolling in his head. It seems that he's maybe suffered some head trauma of some kind. Uh, uh, my name's Zeke. I've, we've just. Look, are you are you part of the Dragon Army? What? what? No, of course not. They bashed me up and threw me in here. I don't remember how long it's been. Why in here and not in the prison cells? Like pointing literally next door. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why they would do that. He kind of like sits up here. You know, he's not bound in any fashion. He does have a sword at his side. What's your name? Well, they... you, you first, horn man. <laughs> I was gonna say, look, it's a bit odd if they—if you're a prisoner, that they've let you keep your weapon. Uh, oh, look at that! It seems I do have it. And you'll kind of lumber up to standing here. Uh, maybe they're not really good prison keepers then. M maybe I. I. Sure, roll some insight. Just because he's because I've warned. Fake armor too before. I know what that's like. <laughs> Subterfuge. <laughs> yeah, like soup. Like you're still in it, right? Oh shit! <laughs> so, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thirteen. There's clearly something off here. You're not sure entirely what it is, but like, yeah, the markers of of things being wrong in this story are definitely there. Zone of truth. Zone of this, you like, just zone bubble, of truth him? Bubble oh of my like god. Life. She's just like she just looks and it just goes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Oh my god. Uh yeah. You summon a zone of truth. A magical zone that guards against deception in a 15 foot radius centered on a point of your choosing. I'm assuming just like inside the door. That's fine. Immediately everyone needs to make a charisma saving throw. Now, you can choose to fail it. Um, otherwise, if you roll the charisma save and you succeed, uh, Reyna will be aware that you have succeeded, that you are still capable of lying. Uh, if you choose to fail, you must tell the truth when you, or you must speak deliberately uh, and cannot speak deliberate lies. So. Uh, Sparta would fail on purpose. Sparta chooses to fail. Okay. Uh, I, I will make a charisma saving throw. It's a non-natural 20. Yeah. Uh, Razik is still capable of lying. Wonderful. And our last guy that's in here, uh, as you say that, and he looks up, uh, fails. You can tell the zone of truth is oh. working. All right, ask your questions. Just gonna, like, stand there and concentrate on the spell. Yes, yeah, ask your questions. I, um... I mean, is there any way we can get out of this cramped little spot here? <laughs> no. It's, it's thrown inside and 
You know, I'd much like to get out. Are you a what? member of the Caliban military? I am a member of the military. <laughs> 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 Hi. <laughs> uh, that wasn't quite the question I asked. <laughs> uh, well, yes, I'm of course a part of the military. I was gonna say I'm not. I'm not there, right? <laughs> no, you. I'm still sleeping. You're okay, still sleeping. Okay. You're napping. I was gonna be. I was gonna be like throwing out the. Who is your allegiance to? <laughs> <laughs> Where is she? Oh, uh, where is she? Where is she? Where are the drugs uh, well, going? What military are you part of, my friend? Uh, well, I guess we're, you know, special attachment to the Caliban military. Um, we're special. I will... <laughs> are you a member of the Red Dragon Army? I'm a member of the army. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this guy clearly is a member of the Red Dragon Army. <laughs> you just say that out loud? <laughs> yeah, I just say that out loud. <laughs> he looks at you. Oh, fine. This is getting exhausting anyways. Uh, and the form will shift, change, and you can hear bones breaking as it turns into uh, a much more draconic-looking creature. Uh, <laughs> and increases in size in front of you. He draws a long, serrated blade as his wings begin to struggle and press against the sides of the room. And he looks down and he's like, I suggest you get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> Roll the initiative. I mean, I... Oh, jeez. <laughs> Joel, oh. Joel, I'm going <laughs> to... Joel, I've got five health. I know! <laughs> ah, isn't that uh, exciting? Real quick, Rain is just gonna yell out, Intruder! As loud as she can, and like, okay, roll initiative. Yup, just, you know, it's, just, it's gonna be a quick one, probably. Oh, shit. It's fine, it's fine. guys. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so I got my guy here. And. Go, and then we'll we'll roll all the guards on one. Uh, Ravenna, in your sleepy nature, you will roll initiative on the second round. Okay. Okay. Because as, I'm assuming the alarm will be raised, and then you'll be you know yes. prison here. Mm -hmm. um, the guards are the first to act surprisingly, uh, and they're gonna all come around this area here. And kind of just give it, give it the old dash in a semicircle and reinforce the position. That's about the best that they're going to be able to do on this round. Some of them dashing much further than others. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. They'll be here. The Draconian looks down at Razik. <sighs> it will feel good to kill in the name of the Dragon Queen again. Is going to swing his serrated sword down at you. Uh, the first is a 16 to hit for 11 slashing. I've gone down, Joel. He will step over your body. <laughs> up into the doorway, his second attack against Wait, Reyna. If he attacks, hold on, can I use my fighting style protection against that attack? When I see an attack uh, at a target that is within five, within feet, five of feet of me, of I can use my reaction to impose Correct. disadvantage. Yes, the target was not within five feet of you, it was ten feet of you. Chicken nuggets. Okay, all right, we got this. Shield up. Shield up. That is a 26. Oh, no, oh, my God. Gosh. For 26 points of damage. <laughs> Down. Down. <laughs> he will then take a step out towards Smartle and swing his tail at you. Hey. A Tails 19 like to you. hit for 7, and I need a strength I'm, I'm, saving throw. Oh, even though I'm down. Right. Oh, are you down? I Oh, no, no, I had 17. I thought I had 5 yeah. for some reason. Okay. Uh, 25? 
<laughs> yeah, so you feel it, like, try to knock you backwards and prone, and it still hits heavily onto your body here. Uh, and he goes, Just get out of the way! Uh, Razika, I need a death save. You got it, Joel. It's That's a 12. one success. Svartle, what do you do? <laughs> I mean, we're Svartle, right? Um... <laughs> He would real quick. do what he always does. He would rage. You got one left. I've got, I've got three left. Oh God! Yeah, Svartle enters a rage on his bonus and action. He would grow his own goddamn tail. Hell yeah! <laughs> awesome. <laughs> then what? Uh, and then, and then he'd uh, he'd swing his great great axe. Yeah, go for it. As this, yeah, as this Draconian, like, makes themselves more known here, you swing the Great Axe against them, and he's wearing, like, some rather hefty uh, armor. But the 16 is going to be just enough to hit. Okay. Uh, for, for eight. Yeah, for eight. Uh, and you should have your second attack now, huh? Yes. Uh, yeah. 21. There you go. For 16. Damn. Huge hit here. Gouging into the body of the Draconian. He staggers back a little bit at this. Mm, why didn't you just die? Uh, Svartle, that is bonus action in action. You have movement left if you want to use it? Nope. Reyna, I need a death save. Well, uh, okay. Our Kalamon military volunteers from Vogler see this terrifying thing and are just going to throw spears at him. Four, five, six, seven, eight spears on the first round here. Uh, and one, two, three, four, five of them will hit. Dealing about 15 points of damage there. Yeah, nice. And the big draconian guy looking pretty rough here. Uh, Ravenna, you are more than welcome to roll your initiative at this point. The other you, soldiers are also dashing in. I the hear the alarm and I just go... Like, instantly open my eyes. Mm -hmm. Back to battle. Okay. okay. Gotta rub the sleeps out of your eyes. Yeah, I mean, I didn't get any health back or anything, right? No. Yeah. Um, Svartle, you are the one directly in front of him here. So oh, everything geez. is coming to you. All First right. attack is a 16 to hit for seven points of slashing, half to three. Second is 18 to hit, 15 slashing, half to seven. That's, that's everything. Okay. He drops Svartle here onto the ground and we'll take a step over him as well. He swings his tail out in like this wide arc, right? Like trying to get things back. Just back! Back! And then he's going to extend his wings and he's just going to take flight. Um, he has a 60 foot fly speed, so he's just going to go 60 feet up. Uh, which is going to put him well out of range for anyone and everyone. And as he swings, you know, kind of wheels around here above the uh, the courtyard. You will shout down. He disappears into the night. Fire eyes will claim everything. The world will burn. Thousands of red dragon wings will soar over your cities and burn them to the ground. He will off into the night leaving our friends very injured on the ground. Well, we get that long rest now, though, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we stay on this until either Ravenna or the military can assist you all from dying. So Razik, Truly, they'd help us. After all we've done for them. But we're, yeah, <laughs> they, they will. But it's a timing issue. So, Rizik, you have one success. You shouldn't die here, but we're going to find out, basically, when you roll this. That's an 18, Joel. Perfect. 
Uh, Savartal, it shouldn't matter. Re uh, Re Ravenna, do you just, like, get up and run out? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're more than welcome to, to move your token as needed. Reyna? Uh, okay. Let's see here. One failure, and then, yeah, the, like, the guards come down here and, and just attempt to help as much as possible. Um, there's a lot of them. Between all of them here, they will be able to stabilize our group. But you are all unconscious for the time being. Ravenna, you get, yeah, outside perhaps up on the top here, right? And you can yeah. see your brother on the ground, um, Reyna lying next to him, and you can make out, you know, kind of in that room over there, Razik as well. The guards have, are all, like, surrounding them, helping and, and stabilizing. So you'll be able to run down and, and figure out what has happened. Um, but it does seem that they suffered quite the wounds here. I go in and I, like, push a guard aside. I go, move! Move! And I go over to Svartal. Brother! And I, like, kneel down and kind of, like, hoist him up. He is very heavy and very unconscious. It does seem that they've we have to get them inside. the worst of the Now! Party. Yeah. Um, and she's, like, yelling like she's a very angry. And she's, like, trying to, like, drag him mm -hmm. over to, like, the cots. You'll get help from them. Uh, and eventually everyone will make their way to be placed in each of what remains of the barracks here. Um, we're gonna put, we'll put Talonor there as well, right? The guards will help you get everyone into the room uh, and, and kind of like help and tend to them and see to them things of that nature okay when you enter and uh, Razik is dragged behind Elgo is kind of propped up on one of the pillows there's oh my cousin Horny what happened to him One of those foul beasts. Foul beasts? Oh. Caught them by surprise. Oh, I wish I had been there to see it. I love foul beasts. I wish I was there to kill it. Well, if it's still out there, then perhaps we go on a hunt. Right now? Well, yes, I could possibly do. She'll try to lean up and she'll lay back. Maybe tomorrow. I'm feeling a bit tired tonight. Tonight. We should all get some rest now. Yes, a, a good sleep. Um, yes. And yeah, they'll kind of like leave you to it, and you'll be able to take a. Long and then rest. before they leave, she she will she will point out the door as they're like leaving. We need rotational watch groups, everywhere. And they'll, you know, give not salutes. leave one stone unturned. We'll give salutes and head out to set that up. The long rest waiting for you. And, uh, yeah. Those of you that are unconscious will wake sometime in the night. Probably an hour or two after this situation, feeling. Ravenna's gonna Horrible. be like right here next to she's gonna be right here, but she's not gonna be in the bed. She's going to be like laying against Spartle's bed, like pass out, like sleeping. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Um She did not mean to be caught unawares, but she figured that since they're all unconscious, there's no way they could be waking up in the middle of the night and see such a blatant display of affection and weakness. Sardle, you'll wake up and find that your sister has passed out trying to watch over you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's lying on the stone floor, propped up against your bed, um, where she was attempting to keep watch for the night. Her you glaive is, like, falling into, like, her arm and mm -hmm. it's, like, leaning. <laughs> you would note that not only your bandages, but hers as well have been soaked through. It seems that at some point in time in the night, perhaps one of her stitches broke. Still actively bleeding. Uh, can I redress it? 
is a flesh wound, really. Uh, yeah, you can. You'll likely wake her, but you can if you'd like to. Yeah, well. Okay. We'll deal with that when we get there. <laughs> the waking her part? So you crawl yeah, yourself yeah. out of bed. Maybe perhaps rip up some of the sheets from the bed next to you. Yeah. And go to redress the wound, peeling off bandages there. Yes, you can see that it does look like the hasty stitch done on the battlefield was not enough to hold it closed. Kind of grumbles a little bit, like, uh, mumbling in her sleep. Uh, if you touch the stitches... I just go wake up. <laughs> if you touch the stitches... Uh, well, it depends. You touch the stitches. Mm, try not to, no. Okay. Just gonna rewrap. Yeah, it'd just be changing the dressing, yeah. Change it, repack it, hopefully prevent any further infection from being possible here. And at the time, Open probably, dirty. yeah, probably redo your own dressings as well. Uh, all of you were suffering quite heavily that evening. The rest of the night kind of just goes easily enough. Reyna, Razik, you would wake up differing points of time in the night feeling awful um again covered in wounds uh most of your nice armor reina fortunately not wearing even your own armor uh hacked through by that serrated sword of that draconian when you need to see repairs at some points more than likely you'd see her you'd hear the tiny snores of elgo duck ditcher over on the side and eventually drift back to sleep Awaken. Maybe not refreshed, but healthier than you were the day before. More than welcome to get all of your spell slots back, abilities, and we get a free rest. HP. That is a full we get a long rest. That is a long yeah. rest. That is a long rest with the guards stationed about as they are. Um, you would be free to long rest. We're back to 69 HP. Nice. All right. <laughs> nice. I don't know why I went to my I went to my spells and I'm like, I don't got any. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you when think? Once wakes up, he's, he's pissed, though. He's, he's seething. Okay. Ravenna, yeah. Go ahead. like, well, <gasps> she kind of, like, grab her spear. Like, she realizes she is drifted off and... Does not know how long she drifted off. She's like... <clears throat> yeah. You feel, you know, or see some of the sun kind of peeking through the overcast clouds in the morning here through the little arrow slit behind you. You realize that you have slept through the night. Rest of you awaken. Um, to a, a morning, maybe not a, a good morning, but a morning. What would you like to do? Uh, she's a spartle. She doesn't know how long he's been awake or whatnot, but she basically is trying to compose herself like nothing happened. Mm -hmm. Glad mm -hmm. to see you were well, brother. Mm-hmm. How's that, uh... How's that, how's that wound? <laughs> My wounds? They, she like looks and she's like, that's a new bandage. <laughs> and it like looks around like trying to process it. Seems to be doing a lot better. Mm -hmm. Must have uh, forgotten it when it was mm -hmm. changed. Mm hmm. But I'm glad to see you are well. I will go out and check on the the watch groups. See what they have to report. All right. And she's like, like looking around like this is. She is obviously making this like way more awkward than it needs to be. <laughs> I mean, Sparta doesn't care too much about what's going on. He he notices yeah. and he's like whatever. But he's he's pissed because he. He was felled. He was mm -hmm. he defeated. So he's he's like, because also the player Dan is like, what if I killed him? 
could have. What if? What if I killed this whoever this guy is? Uh, she will escort her way out mm -hmm. and go see about getting reports from the the watch groups. Yeah. Um. Going outside, uh, you kind of make your rounds with the guards and things. They, it seems that they did prepare a bit of a, a small meal, a repast for you, like a more than likely just like a, a porridge in the morning. You'd be handed a bowl as you make your rounds. The drizzle be is yeah, holding it and, yeah, the, and, and drinking it. The drizzle is just starting out here today, fortunately. Hopefully, you'll be returning back to Kalamon soon enough that you can get out of the rain. The watch groups would make their reports. Nothing has happened. There was no sightings of more um, of the Draconians or any encouraging forces or anything like that. Uh, but it wouldn't take long uh, as the you know the morning gets started here that the reinforcements from Kalaman would arrive. Um, a large you know column of horses would be heading this direction in the um, armory of Kalaman and they would begin to set about settling in here uh, and establishing the Wheel Watch Outpost once again. You would likely meet whoever would like to. This is a group thing, or if there's something else that you all would like to do, but there would be an opportunity to talk to the captain of this particular guard when you're ready. Um, so yeah, there wouldn't be much from the, the guards from their, their watch reports. Does anyone else have anything they want to be doing immediately here in the morning? Uh, Sparta would just, would probably hang, it, there's, um, there's armaments, right? Like, the, uh, not armaments, um. There's weapons and things, yeah. Uh, I'm not, that's not what I'm trying to say. The, um, the walls. Can I sit on the walls? You sit on the walls! Yeah, you could go up to, like, one of the towers or the walls or something like that and go have a sit. Yeah. Yeah, alright. You can go up to, like, one of the, the northern walls there and have a, have a sit down. Sure. I will go ahead and I will, uh, inquire about, like, armory or like storage like where they keep like their weapons and stuff uh and yeah. i would like to proceed to grab like two of two of them like after the reinforcements arrive and are kind of settling i would require two of two of whoever really to come with me to go to like the armory and stuff like that to pretty much like raid it you know see what we can collect like inventory sure. and stuff yeah so the, the wheel watch outpost did used to belong to the kalaman army um and yeah the, the armory is literally kind of just outside the barracks here it would be oh, a, okay, okay. A, a mismosh of axes, spears, swords, bows, arrows, shields, and things like that. Um, but there's not overly much to raid from this, but there is enough here to, like, you know, an established, uh, you know, guard group at the out outpost could make good use of it. Is there a javelin? Yeah, would you like, mm -hmm. you want to take some of the javelins? I would like, a, I would like to take some more javelins. Okay. Uh, there are... Yeah, uh, depending on the yeah, weight right. of it. Because obviously, yeah, depending on, like, the weight of them. Sure. I, I already have two. You have two? Um, oh, no. Why does it say I have two? I have four. Why does it say I have two? I have four. Let's take a look at your sheet real quick. Are we yeah, reading the... Yeah, I've got the, two, but I was looking at the item name. Javelin, you have four. The right side yeah. is weight. Each javelin weighs two pounds. Oh, okay, okay. Left side is number. So you have four already. I'll take two more. You're going to take your... Uh, all right, we got six. Yes. All right. You got six. Um, Yeah, okay. I'm noting that you have some long swords in there, so I'm going to update that one real quick as we Addiction do this. Addiction is real. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep collecting. Just I know, right? Collecting enemy swords. Been playing too much Baldur's Gate. Just collecting <laughs> enemy <laughs> swords. Wait. Well, so I was asking six. to wait because I was like, wait a second. And I'm like, yeah, I was like, wait, 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 wait. You are a walking armory keep... at this point. <laughs> I, I purposely as, always as kept as axes I so I can throw them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, well, like, wait. Yeah, so I was going to say. Does Fartle carry axes? Yeah. He's got mm, hand axes, right? I think I have hand axes. I believe you do. I've got spears. I have faith that you have hand axes. Uh, uh, not written down, you have javelins. probably. I have javelins, have javelins. yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're fine. You have javelins. You got four yeah. of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, there are bows and things here if you wanted to, like, utilize that instead. Um, yeah. I don't think I can... Uh, Razik, is there anything you want to do in the morning? 
Uh, well, you mentioned the, our armor and robes. Well, I would use mending to repair my armor and robes if I can. Okay, roll, yeah. I think. Yeah, you take time Also, I would to... try and stay away from Elgo. <laughs> I don't just not make eye contact with him. And... That would be uh, physically impossible. Um, damn it. <laughs> additionally, mending takes a minute to cast every time you cast it, so it's going to take a good portion of your morning to, like, get Yeah, I don't, I don't mind doing that. Okay. Morning um, cousin cannot be avoided. Yeah. El Elgo, <laughs> like, would just be watching you, right? Just standing there, watching you, leaning on her hoop hock, looking at you. Good morning, cousin. <laughs> Sun says hello. Yeah. Good morning. Salutations. <laughs> Salutations, cousin. <laughs> Do okay, you want Nico. breakfast? <laughs> Nico. Um, yeah, so she just, she just like watches you. Just, Hi, can you teach me how to do that? That looks pretty cool. Uh, Cousin Horny, I mean, do... can you teach me? <laughs> no, I... I c do you have any magical aptitudes? I'm quite magical all around. Have you seen me? <laughs> She's like, how dare you ask that question? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I could. I don't. I, I don't know if I can just teach a spell. You know, it requires a bit of study, and you know. You saying I'm not smart? No, I'm not. I'm not saying that. They don't that, got the I book mean, learning like you do. Well, it's not really book learning that I have either. I I was taught by um, my tribes people on how to do things like this. Oh, is that right? Mm. <laughs> yes. What's that like glowing thing from your backpack every time you do it? <laughs> well, that's um, that that kind of allows me to, I guess, channel the, the the magic that I use to to repair this. A blue lantern inside your bag lets you channel the magic. It's not quite a lantern; it's a a, mag a magical light of of some sort. A magical light of some sort. All right, so maybe you can help me do it then. Uh, I'm afraid it's um. Attuned to me only. Uh, it doesn't. It'll, it'll only work for me. I'm afraid. She stares you down. She's attempting <laughs> I mean, that to is a lie. In, I'm insight sure. check you. Casting X to doubt. <laughs> yeah, she is. She is insight checking you here. If you would like to make a deception. Oh, that's a that's natural a natural 20. twenty, Joel. I rolled a nat twenty out of twenty one. Son of a oh, bitch. Shit. Wow. <laughs> she looks at you. All right, Cousin Horny, you keep your secrets then. <laughs> I really don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> what, you don't like being my cousin? Well, no, I mean, you know what? Look, well, look, I feel like you I mean, you're, you're a nice person and all, but... I mean, yeah. it's... What, 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 look, let's be honest for a second. It's obviously a bit odd that you're just, you know... Saying that I'm your cousin after I mean we haven't even known each other for twenty four hours and um is it is it I've never met a Kender before. Is this a a, a normal Kender thing or all Kender are special in their own way. <laughs> um Sorry, I kind of zoned out there for a little bit. Um <laughs> I think I'm gonna go get some breakfast. And she's just gonna leave the room. Having not <laughs> apparently heard anything you've said. <laughs> I just want to do it, you know, like, I'll look at the gym does to the off uh, to the camera yeah, in the just office. just look at like, the camera. <laughs> 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 I don't know what yeah, else to I don't, say. What, what are you going to do? All right. Uh, yeah. Reyna, what about your morning? What does it look like? Well, I really, the only thing I want to do is talk to the watch commander. So I would sure. wait for everybody to kind of finish their morning uh, stuff, go grab some food to eat. And then when everybody's ready to talk to him, like my main point of order is um, if Razik had told us like some of the information that he found in the documents, then I would want to talk to the watch commander because if they intend on holding this and keeping a hold of this, then they're more than likely going to send back reinforcements. So it's either like we need to ditch this and get out of here or we need to get somebody like more reinforcements here. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, I would also like to note that I'm going to discard my two long swords that I have. Uh, <laughs> and because <laughs> sure. now I realize that I do have two long swords and that uh. I'm pretty sure I'm proficient in bows because I'm proficient yeah. in martial and simple. Yeah. And so I'd like to take a, uh, One of the short a bows? long bow. 
Oh. Or no, a short bow. Short bow. I definitely have short bows here. Yeah. So I'll take a short bow and then um, a uh, a quiver of arrows. Sure. Absolutely. I don't know how many arrows would be in that. But... It's in tw It's 20. I'll go ahead 20? and just okay. add it. Yeah. So if you do okay. it from the compendium, it will add oh, okay. all of the things yeah. automatically. I will go ahead and I will do that. I'm already on it. Oh, thank uh, you. Yeah. So, let's see here. She can't really throw long... I mean, she could throw long swords. They're just probably not... Not the best. Not the best to throw, you know? Right. So she figured she'd rather get a different kind of long distance weapon because she can fight with her glaive. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. You have 20 arrows and a short bow. And she'll be, uh... She'll be taking some, um like some other arrows from like a different quiver or whatnot. She'll be kind of like doing like target practice. Okay. So she's good. Okay. So yeah, I, I guess with that, once the repairs and things are done, we kind of just head out uh, to talk to the, the new commander. You'd see Elgo down towards the south end making a fuss over breakfast, but otherwise the commander uh, is here in front of you. And he does seem to be setting up the soldiers that he does have here. Uh, unpictured would be the uh, the horses that they would have rode in on. So those would just be around in the area, also being taken care of at the same time. But yeah, he would see you and look up. And, ah, I've heard a good amount about you. Special attachment, huh? Good morning. Uh, quite the work that you did here last night. Appreciate that. My name is Commander Lane. I'll be taking over the uh, wheel watch outpost for the time being. Anything that you saw, heard, or otherwise that we should be aware of? I, I would relate the, the, the stuff in the reports that I, I found uh, to Commander Lane. And he'll nod and says, Hey, that matches some of the things we had heard previously. Well, did any, um, make their way out? Seems that you killed the winged beast here. Probably the easiest, uh, escapee, if there was going to be one. No. One. One. Got away. Hmm. Something that we can track down. Flew. Flew away. Something we can't track down. Unfortunately not. They gave us a warning, more or less, and flew away. Warning? What kind of warning? Red dragon wings huh. filling the sky. Oh. That could really be a warning. Or oh, a threat, I think, if anything else. All right. Do they uh, insinuate any plans on taking Wheel Watch back? Will we be ready for a fight in the coming days? I look over to, uh. What's that, Ravenna? <laughs> <laughs> I look at myself in my pocket mirror. I look at myself. <laughs> uh, I look at Reyna and I kind of nod because, like, she was the one who was, like, in disguise talking with them. So, yeah. like, I assume yeah, Reyna, that she might have gotten any kind of stuff. Are you back in your Salomnic armor? Oh, yes. Thank okay. the gods. Yeah. It's like a glove. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, it's like, a, you know, we don't want to make the wrong impression here, huh? <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. So, you know, you get the nod over there, and he looks over and he's, Knight of Salomnia. I did hear one of yours was in this attachment. Anything further Give to report? Brief salute. Uh, no, it's as far as you've heard, this is all that we have to report. Mm. Um... If they plan on coming back to secure this fortress, then we will either want to depart and join up with the rest of the forces and warn them, or try and hold this fort as long as possible. It seems right. of some well, importance to them. Uh, fortunately for you folk, it won't be your problem. At least until you maybe have to take it back again. He will kind of move forward here, and he hands you a, uh, a scroll case. Your new orders. Looks like you're going to be getting a, a brief 
respite in Kalaman. But you are to head back today for receiving additional orders. Do we... Uh, I kind of, like, look to the party. and Do you all feel road-ready enough? I am. I'm good. Ravenna says, yes, she has run away. <laughs> Talonor says, hi-dee-ho, everyone, I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> that's his voice. I will not change it. And then we kind of, like, camera pan over to Svartal sitting on the edge of the wall, pondering life's existence. Uh, and maybe dragons. Mm. He's um, down for whatever, but he's he's out there. Yeah, and we'll kind of close on our, our break here with just, like, the image of Svartal sitting on the edge of the wall while the rest of the party gets ready, gets their horses prepared to head back to Kalama. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. The Dragon Queen has gone to war. The conquest of Ancelon has begun. Eastern portions of the continent have fallen. Kenderbor and Sylvanesti fight for their lives. Where are the heroes in our time of need? Who will stand and join the ranks of the Shard? Join the premier mercenary group known as the Shard of Discord. Build your character, select your class, and roll dice in a game designed by me, Runaway Robot. Scout, build, craft, and fight your way to victory during live stream game crises that directly affect the Diefall show Dragonlance, Shadow of the Dragon Queen. Join now at patreon.com slash Diefall. Shard of Discord Season 2 begins. First of all, welcome back. Are you gonna... God damn it, cat. All right, yeah. But welcome back. <laughs> uh, we're gonna we're gonna do a little, a little, little jumpy jump forward here. Uh, mostly because... Nothing really interesting happens back from Wheel Watch. Uh, you finally get out of the the rain, uh, and you can you know start to dry yourselves off on the way back to Kalaman. Um, but I would like perception checks from everyone. Great. Yeah, 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 yeah. An eighteen. Sit. Rolled a three, but you did roll a three. Look at you. Oh, yikes! Why did it roll? Did, you roll, did you roll two ones? That is two ones. <laughs> Damn, that's two nat ones. That's a crazy thing. I love that. That's great. Um, yeah. So what we would note is that like we move through Kalamon, and it is pretty much business as as normal. It is, um. You would note significant, like well guarded, right? The, kind of the same thing when we saw when we came back the previous time. The uh, the amount of guards folk on the walls in the towers at the gates much higher number uh, than when we had originally arrived at Kalaman. But as we make our way back to Castle Kalaman, our quarters perhaps to you know change clothes, dry off, whatever. Uh, we we note something here. Razik specifically is going to be the one to to notice it. Is as you move up and into the castle, you'll note that it's unusually quiet. There's actually not a lot of soldiers here at all. And when you make an attempt to report to Marshal Vendry's office, uh, an aide standing at the door uh, stops you. Oh, sorry, everyone. Uh, Marshal Vendry is not in. Um, when you left, Kalaman, City Council got word that a contingent of Dragon Army troops had broken away from a larger force and... Um, well, uh, Marshal uh, Vendry was called away to, to handle that business. How many forces did they take? Um, well, it seems that, tired of the measured steps we've been taking, uh, members of Kalaman's leadership, um, I think Lord Bakaris, uh, demanded that uh, Kalaman's military ride out to seize some victory. The entire army? Well, um, quite a bit of them. But we still have our forces here, just um, most of the primary forces have been detached, yes. Those blasted fools. So um, he has essentially left this place weakened. Oh, um, potentially, I, I suppose. Um, but if we are to strike a decisive blow against the enemy, I suppose that would be good too. <laughs> I'm no military man, I'm just a... Uh, <laughs> I'm just, um... She's just shaking her head in disappointment. She is like scowling like you are like, she's got, she is, oh, she is very, very livid right now. You can like sense the agitation 
hmm. off of her. Huh. Well, um, Marshal Vendry being away on that on business to to you know battle the dragon army, uh, uh left Governor Miot to uh, approve the strike. Um, so Lord Bakaris and his son are are leading the attack. Uh, and um, your commander, uh, uh Captain Derrett Highwater, uh, went with them. He is under their uh, their command, I think. Where did they head exactly again? Um, a place called uh, Steel Springs. How far is that? Uh, 30 miles west of here. Damn it. Damn it, old hells. Anyways, it's a pretty good plan. They plan to ambush the Red Dragon army near the crossing of the Inkwater called Steel Springs. They are um, not prepared. Not from what we have run into. Oh. Oh, interesting. Um, well, all right. Um, anyways, I, I was sent to de deliver that. Um. Sorry. Uh, your quarters you're have been cleaned. You're just cleaned a messenger. And prepared and, uh, you know, so get some rest uh, before, uh, the commander comes back and the marshal, uh, sends you, uh, off on something else. No, The only no, no, thing no, no, we no. should be sorry for is the lives that are about to be lost. Where is Governor Miat? The, the governor is, um, well, I suppose he's in the uh, council chambers. Going straight there, right yeah. now. Yeah. As, as we, like, Following. move up going to the council chambers, it is it is closed. Uh, and you are stopped by guards there. And Oh, hold up, hold up. Um, what seems to be the rush? I need to speak to Governor Miat immediately. We do. Your men us. are being led. Into a death I... trap. Oh. Uh, well, he's busy conducting business with the city's guild members. And won't be available for There won't be any yet. business to conduct if we don't see him. Hold a moment, please. Let me... And he'll, you know, give a nod to the other guard, and he'll kind of quietly go into the room. Um, about 20 minutes will pass before he comes back out. I, um seem to have bought a bit of time. Uh, they're, they're going to take a, a recess, and um, you'll be able to speak to Governor Miat. And as he says that, the large double doors open, uh, and some of the guild members kind of move out here, and they go to take a, a break during their negotiations, uh, leaving the room open for you to go talk to Governor Miat. We'll enter the chamber respectfully, waiting for him to address us. Yeah, he sees. Oh, welcome. She, she walks in. Rebecca's well, saying thing. She you walks in, it. and like you mm -hmm. know, we stand you know a respectful distance away, and like we're quiet. And then Ravenna just goes with her like glaive, and then just is waiting, like just ah. stone faced. So the heroes of Vogler. Ah, it's good to see you back once again. Um, how did the um ah. A battle at Wheel Watch. How did that go? I wish you would have waited for our report before mm. sending Bakaris and majority of the troops out away from Kalama. Not sure I understand the issue. Lord Bakaris was quite confident in him and his son's abilities, as well as those of Kalaman, to strike. Lord yeah. Bakaris is naive and ill experienced. He's... In the task at hand. Hmm. The things we ran into during our mission were also of surprise, and we also were not prepared. Uh, to be and a little bit us... more specific about this, I I'm not sure I see the issue, unless you have you know, no faith in the Kalaman military. <laughs> I just have no faith in Lord Bakaris to be plain. We almost now, died. What? He'll, he'll, like, he'll take a stern look. Um at Reyna here's I if you truly believe that Lord Bakaris was up to the task do you think that he would have taken the majority of these troops and ran them straight into an army of dragonelles sir he will raise a hand and the guards will kind of move in around you here do not interrupt me you may be a knight of Salamnia but this is my city and you will not have a city if there are no men and then she kind of gives like, like a please. 
we have information regarding troop movements and were assured, well as the enthusiasm of Lord Bakaris and his son, that we could execute an ambush on favorable ground against the Red Dragon army, and so they have been sent to do such thing. Now, whatever you are talking about, dragon elves, not even heard of such a thing. These I, creatures pose as mere mortal soldiers, but they are not. Are you Once saying there are shapeshifters among us? Of the sorts. They appear to be normal men dressed as soldiers. He looks directly at you, Ravenna. How are we to know that you are not one of them right now? I look at uh, Reyna and kind of like nod like permission to cast a spell, sir. He looks at you. It is simply a spell to detain truth and to know that one is telling the truth. That is all. I would like her to cast it on me. He, he looks at A zone of truth spell. No, no, not from you, but... He'll look over to the side. He gives a nod, and you'll see, like, there is a, a cleric there. And to make you sure that to we're in good faith. Time to time. She uh, will. She will nod, and then she will directly hand her glaive to Reyna to hold it. So she, she will have empty hands. Of course, she's got her, you know, the weapons on the back or whatnot. And she goes, if you would like me to remove the rest of my weapons for this. This is not necessary, but we will use our zone of truth in case that the Salomnic Knight Reyna has been compromised as well. Understood. And I agree. Yeah, he looks at the cleric, he looks at you all and says, You will willingly fail the spell, each of you, and tell the truth plainly. And we will get to the bottom of this. He'll give the nod to the cleric who will cast the spell in your area. Uh, I would need charisma saving throws if you choose to roll them. Nope. Uh, Razik. <laughs> no, 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 I choose to fail, Joel, don't worry. Okay. I thought maybe it might be fun, but... I was going to say, it's like, <laughs> a good idea. I thought it'd be fun. If, Con if Connor was here, he absolutely would. So, you know, maybe this is oh. a good day for him to not be here and pull some Talonor shen shenanigans. Uh, yeah, uh, Svartal, you going to choose to fail? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, the cleric will look over at, at the governor and give the nod. Good. Now, say it plainly. What is a dragon L? A dragon elf, from what we have learned and experienced firsthand, is a creature that takes the guise of a mere mortal human. Mm. However, once the illusion is broken by their discretion, they transform into a monstrous being, almost two to maybe three times the size of their original illusion. wonder how they maintain that. With a long tail, capable of knocking down many men, and great wings to give it flight. Hmm. You are saying that these creatures could have infiltrated Kalaman forces? Possibly, but not only that, A basic ambush upon them could spill ruin for our men. Your men. <sighs> Especially if they are caught unawares and do not have this information. Like Lord Bakaris. All right, all right. Anything else you wish to share while under the spell of truth? They also have dragon riders. Aye, uh, we've been aware of their dragon riding scouts. How they have kept so much information from us. Uh, they've always been one step ahead, but this information that we have gathered for this strike seems 
that we are finally ahead. Where did your information come from? Our own scouts, and delivered by Lord Bakaris. And how do you know that those scouts, or even Lord Bakaris, are who they are? And she kind of, like, tilts, tilts her head and kind of gives an eyebrow, like, at the zone of truth. I am only mm. looking out for you and your men, your city. I understand. I appreciate your concerns. Unfortunately, the military has already been dispatched. There is not I can do about it now. We hope for the best, that the plan holds true, and that they strike hard and fast at the Red Dragon Army. I will send scouts and riders messengers to deliver the information you have here, and he's given a nod over to a guard's folk who is, like, writing all of this down. And hopefully they will arrive in time to provide this level of intel. It will take them day and tomorrow to get there. So we must just hope. I would like to make a request. He looks at you. For your heroism at Vogler and your assistance at the outpost, you may make one request should it be in my power. In order to protect you and yours, I feel it necessary to, and she kind of points down to the zone of truth, even those that you have trusted. We will institute a... an event on the return of the military and those that are in the castle itself, we shall establish them here. Those that are currently capable will walk through the zone and we will verify them. Now, this is not something we can do every day or all the time, but we will take the necessary precautions with this new information. With this information, she kind of like bows again. I feel it would be in your best interest to keep it among very few. Yeah, the one that was under full of guards. <laughs> yeah, the one that was under the zone of truth did not completely transform until at their own will. Understood. So they are very cunning, and I feel if given a heads up or a lead, they could try and deceive you. I understand. Again, appreciate your concern for Alamon, though it is not your own home. <laughs> it is not my people, but I also do not wish for innocent blood to be slaughtered. No one has wow. to die. Fortunately, this is war. And people Unless will it is continue necessary. to die. Now, I have much work to do. Guild leaders are raking me over the coals today. Tariffs, trades, and taxes. Is there anything uh, else that you wish to share at this point? Just to take a question above table, Joel. Mm -hmm. As a leader, of course, he's supposed to show decorum and, and keep his demeanor very just like... Supposed to be calm. Mm -hmm. Is he a little too calm? In this moment, with all the, the facts he's telling us, does it feel like? I guess I'm kind of asking if I can insight check him. Yeah, is, roll does insight. it feel like he already like he already knew this because of scouts, or is there no, like just, I just, just roll insight? I, I think that's okay. the best way to to kind of get a feel for the man that's sitting a, across the table. Um, okay. on a, on a twelve, uh, you are well aware that the governor of Kalaman defers all military decisions and knowledge and basis to Marshal Vendry. Um, his, like, actual level of knowledge and input on this is going to be pretty low. So it's not that he doesn't seem alarmed by it all here, um, though you do bring alarming information. But it's that he just generally defers to Marshal Vendry, so when it comes to, like, 
the pol or like the the acts of war or the missions and things like that. He doesn't really have a hand in it one way or another. So for him, it's just like, ah, it's out of my hands now. We hope they, they succeed and hope they come back. Um, so it's not, not caring, but yeah. Like a general, he does still have like a general interest in the people though. Like yes. Not yeah. yeah. In the like his, okay. his whole thing is keeping Kalamon running. That's his job. Okay. Um, so yeah, like he, he will take it seriously, but there's not for him, there's not much that he can actually do for the military at this point in time. It's not his decision to be made. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there's one way or another that a 12 gets you like, ah, he's actually the bad guy or whatever. No, not, no. You're not reading that far into it. No, I just want, I just literally making sure that he has a general of like a vested interest in his people. Like yeah, that's he does. All, like, he seems, I don't want him to say like, he'll send these people out, this messenger out. And then the messenger like never makes it there. That's all. Well, that, that may be for different reasons, but, um, for him, he definitely seems moderately annoyed at being interrupted today, so everything has been tinged with kind of this annoyance and hurry up. Um, but yeah, I mean, he'll he'll use the information how he will. Cool. Okay. Um, any last things, or you will be escorted out from the chamber. Okay. Uh, she will, like half foul like you know the best she can again she's not really like of you know she's not not from the first and that kind of stuff yeah she's, she's not from it, the court doing it so she's doing girl, it and then bro. she will uh she will the nod the yeah and then she will go ahead and like reach for the glaive from uh rain yep. and walk out okay um yeah walking out of of the room here the doors creak close behind you and you are left in the mostly empty castle Kalamon to your own devices. Now, you would have basically traveled the entire day to get back here. So we would be kind of looking at like a, a an afternoon to evening situation. Um, is there anything that you would like to do with that kind of time? <laughs> Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna drive Connor's character back to Wyan's apothecary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, for him, uh, uh, like, my brain says, like, okay, Talonor has been told, like, when he comes back during the nights, he goes to Wyan's at least for an hour, right? So, like, he would mm. likely go do that. Um, but, yeah, up to you guys on what you would want to do, either in the castle or out on the town with the afternoon. If anything. Or do you just return to your chambers? I mean, I don't really know what else I kind of do because it's like the I don't thing know, to do would be like I go, you know, shop to find antsy. something. Or I mean, she could let me see how much gold I have because uh, it would probably help well, to have. Well, well, uh, Razik's got all the money oh. now. <laughs> Razik picked Sorry, up no, a couple I, of hundred yes, I, gold. I'm, um, at some point, I guess Razik would have said, "Oh, everyone, I've managed to when we were in the." Outpost. I managed to find some gold. I think it's only fair to split it five ways between us. So it was two sixty yep. in total. I found four, um, four ways. Four. Yeah. <laughs> four no, no, I mean, no, 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 I mean that from Svartle's perspective, he wouldn't. He oh, wouldn't I thought you're. Oh, I no, like, no, 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 not from Connor. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Oh no, I, God, no. That's so seriously, funny. like, like he doesn't really think about things in terms of money like ever if he needs if he needs something badly he'll just ask one of you to buy it for him okay so for everyone else it's 65. okay yeah she would want to uh she would communicate that she is going to go to the uh to the market to go see about buying like a health pot or two or whatnot depending on how much they cost hey why is apothecary <laughs> that's where you get those. But she, but she doesn't like. She doesn't like put one like two and two together. That that's where you know. Yeah. Because Telmer didn't say anything. Go. So yeah. So she's gonna go there. You're gonna go to what? Wow, that's fun. Um, yeah. I I think. Is there anyone that would want to go with her? The yes. Lions? Yes. Okay. Well, yes. Let's go. If 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 Swartle knew that where she was going, yeah, he would go. Okay. Otherwise, he would just be wandering 
aimlessly, like literally wandering. He wouldn't be in his chamber. Okay. Um, anyone else going to Wyans? I don't think so, no. No? Okay. Uh, no, just, I, go... I want to sell the silver longsword, though, that I found. You Ooh. want to sell the silvered longsword? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you could do that up at the Hammer Strike Forges. Do you have any desire to RP that, or you just want the money for it? Just, just give me the gold, Joel. Give me the gold. Max value. Max? <laughs> Absolutely not. For a used weapon? Ugh. No I sound like a used car salesman. Uh, you can get about 50 gold pieces for it. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty good value, considering. Cool. Uh, Reyna, during their time of going to Wyans, uh, are you just going back to the room, or...? I would like to go visit the, uh, the Vogler people. Oh, so I'll bring more candies and stuff. You, you would like to go visit where? Oh, the, the Vogler peoples. Oh, the Vogler folk. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah you're cutting out a little bit for me. Um... That's all right. Yeah, so they are out on the trade gate, so you'll you'll head that direction, splitting off with the other group as they go to Wyans. Perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, fun. Wyans Apothecary. Uh, it smells of licorice and pepper. A couple mm. of tables displaying good luck charms, animal bones, vials advertising various remedies. And at the back of the shop, looking like she was just about getting ready to close the place, is a human woman with raven hair and a dark dress feathered wing-like sleeves behind the counter, heaped with open books. Looks up. Huh. It's Fartal. Good to see you. And you brought Hello. your sister this time. I mean, she brought me. She's got she's got stuff to do. Oh, indeed. She looks a little Are we looking to make actual curious? purchases today? Brother, do you know of this woman? Yeah... But I, I can't tell you why. You cannot tell me why you know of this woman at oh, well, well, the I mean, shop? Okay, well, I mean, she's friends with, uh, you know, Eleanor. I look at the woman. What relation do you have with my brother? Your brother? Well, he's a customer. I gave him a potted plant the last time he was yeah. in here. You remember the thing I brought back? Yeah, that was very, here. very generous. Hmm. He seemed like he would take good care of it. Nice and healthy. Good. Now, hey. is there anything that you need? Yes. I am in need of um potions. Potions. Of what the healing of sort. Potions? Ah, I do have some. Uh, I've been in the process of making them as requisitioned by the Kalaman military, so yes, I suppose I could spare some, though they will be at a bit of a premium. I see. Everything is going to the war effort, dear. So, those that don't, I will charge a little extra for. Well, this is specifically for the war. We had just come back from taking an outpost. Indeed. Do you mind me asking, how did Talanor do? Kind of looks a little bit. He did very well, if you wish to know. What did he use? What Are spells? you talking of his spells? Indeed. I do not know much about that magical sort of thing, but Sparkle Hands himself is very versed in it, it seems. He was he able to uh, conceal us in a way that we were undetectable. Did you choose All three of us. Oh. Yes, and he took down many men with, uh, it was lightning, right? It was. Yeah. Twice. With, uh, mm -hmm. with lightning. It was quite impressive, really. Lightning. Yes. He should not be progressing so quickly. That is a conversation I will have to have with him. I'm sorry, Anyhow. but what relation do you have with Sparkle Fingers? 
Is it the same as my brother? I am his teacher. Now, about those potions. He did not mention he had a teacher. But then again, he did not mention that he was royalty either. He doesn't say is, a lot of things. He is full of surprises, it seems. You may want to ask questions about those you travel with there, Ravenna. I try not to pry. It is not my business. If they are to have your back during a war, perhaps it is your business to know where their allegiances lie. Perhaps you are right. I will keep it into consideration. Thank you for your counsel. Of course. And Potions, dear. Be out 60 gold pieces each. A regular healing potion. I have five available that will not be requisitioned by the city. Is that a lot? It's a good bit, dear. Was it 60 and there was five of them? So it's 60 each. 60 each, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's five and of she them? She has five available. Available, okay. Um, Let me see here. Doing a little math here. You want your math? It's I 300 will take... total. Yeah, Uh, and she has 320 nice. in gold, so she Where will- you, uh... you got so rich? So she, it's when she took money from uh the first, uh what's it called? The caravan thing. Yeah. She was able to loot gold from that, and then she was able to uh, get some jewels. So she sold those. Yeah. So she sold those, and then um, she got more loot from like the battle, like at that hill or whatnot. Ravenna's a regular loot goblin. Look at so. you go. <laughs> so yeah. she has that, and that's pretty much like how she's. And then also, uh, the money that she just got. So she has a three twenty. So she'll go ahead and she'll. I will take three. Three it is. One hundred and eighty, please. She will hand her the gold. She uh, will place the vials down. They are, you know, small glass vials, about shot sized. Um, for our game, just for everyone at home that knows, when we have potions and they are on your person, as practiced adventurers, they're more than likely in an easily accessible location. Meaning you can take a potion as a bonus action. Woo! Giving someone else a potion, however, like force feeding a downed friend, is a full action. Hmm. Uh, she will also say, I still have about 140 on my person. And I am curious if there is any... Hmm, how should I put this? Potions Back in my tribe... Power, dear? Power. I was thinking more of a protein type for my weapon, but you pique my interest. What is this potion of power you speak of? Oh, I have many different types of potions of power, depending on what you're looking for. Hmm. She kind of Would you a like bit. to grow in size, breathe underwater? Cause those of your desire to fall in love with you. Breathe fire for a time. Become friends with animals. She Any looks at Bartle for that one. Are things that I can provide, but not without no. cost. I like of the course. breathe fire one. Yes, you would like to breathe fire. Just like those dragon machines we've battled. I would like to see if you have a specific type of coding. What we face is heavily armored, scaled. Yeah. I wonder if you might have something to help penetrate the actual skin. Like a oil of sharpness, something along those lines? Yes. Hmm. That is something that I could work on, but I do not think I have any available at the moment. No, no. Oil of sharpness is a very difficult thing to make. It's very rare. I do not think your 160 gold pieces could cover the cost of the materials alone. Damn. 
Understood. Yeah, as as note, like the thing you're looking for yeah. in oil is very is expensive. A very that rare is a potion. Very expensive. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. But I will consider this and perhaps be able to work on it. Should you be able to provide adequate monetary compensation? Palinor is of royalty, is he not? He is. Somewhat. Somewhat. Indeed. Hmm. This journey will take him many places, and one day he will have to renounce his title in favor of a new one. Almost like a promotion of sorts. Mm. I would certainly call it a promotion. Though I don't think many royalty would. Hmm. Again, I believe you. How is he sponsored? Just ask him. How is he sponsored? He is not. He is not sponsored. He's got, I sponsor got Red Bull. him. He's got yeah, he's got Red Bull sponsorships. <laughs> <laughs> Red Bull sponsorships. Uh. He is not sponsored by a patron. Not even his own family. It's not my business to tell you his business. But you know He's so much of it. He's been away from his family for quite some time. Hmm. I see. Thank you. He would like to that share his familial status. That can be on his own time. Yes, of course. Uh, Svartal, is there anything you would mm. like, dear? Hmm. I don't think so. I think I'm good. Oh, uh, uh, what, what, I mean, what, what do you got? I don't really take potions. That's kind of weird. I don't. Oh. You don't? Yeah, come here. Like, gesture for you to come on to the side oh. and to lean in close. And... Now. He does a walk. I need you to take this one. Huh? Not going to tell you what it is. But when situations get dire, I need you to be responsible for keeping Talanor alive. You understand? Uh, yeah. I mean, he's a friend. I would do it anyway. What? What? Mm, do I give this to him when there's things when it's bad? No, no. Yourself. Oh. oh. Above all others. That one must live. Oh. Okay. Alright. I'll Good do my God. best. Here you go. She'll just hand you this small vial. And inside it uh, is what seems to be this like black, thick liquid. Um. And it's very viscous looking. You think there's like bits and pieces of flesh inside it? <laughs> okay. Uh, is there like a cork cork top? Yep. Uh, he would pull out. Um, he would pull out a knife, and um, he would try to draw like a uh, a sort of very very basic skull and crossbones. For the symbol, and to himself would say, it would be, definitely drink when we're almost dead. Yeah, yeah, not this is poison, but definitely yeah. drink when I'm about to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Um, and she'll, you know, wait. You exit the store with your things and maybe even more questions. Um, and we'll kind of bounce on out to the outer walls. Uh, it's been a while since we've been to the the trade gates and those from from Vogler here. Uh, would note that it is getting later in the day, so like things are somewhat winding down. But we'd head to the um, Reina, catching up with Reina. We would head to the three somewhat warehouse esque buildings that the peoples of Vogler have been put up in. Um, what you would note is that there's not that many of them here. Mostly uh, the elderly children. And um, a smattering of, of others that are taking care of things. Uh, Mayor, um, Mayor Raven would be there, however. 
I think she'd likely, other than the children, who are asking about candy when you arrive, would be the first to greet you at the door. Ah, Reina, it is good to see you again. Uh, how is everything? How's Derek? Good. good. He, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a second. I've got, like, children yeah, there's just clamoring kidding. all over me like candy? monkeys. candy? I would, I want more candy, please. Got any games on your phone? Uh, <laughs> if you can you find it, I can just like hold out my arms. And they're just like digging into your armor. So, I can't get past the armor. All right, all right. Like, kids, kids, come on now. Come on now. She'll, you know, shoo them away. Um, some of the, the women will come gather them and um, take them off to the side. She'll, you know, gesture over to what amounts for their small kitchen, right? Like the contraption um, that Van had installed into one of the warehouse buildings. I'll put some tea on, and she'll go turn to do that, and eventually you'll just sit at a small wooden table there. And So, news. Tell us. We've been somewhat um, insulated from many of the happenings here. Ah, I can understand. Um... Where to start? You can see, like, Reyna, her mind seems to be elsewhere. Uh, she's, like, staring off, watching the children play, getting, like, distracted by people walking by. Mm -hmm. These right. past few days have been rough, to say the least. In what way? The fighting... She says it with low, like, lower tone, because there's, like, also, again, children running past, you know, yeah. like, the, the killing and, and the death. I just needed a moment to be around people. Of course. Sit. R relax. Rest. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you of, of us. Perhaps take your mind off the battlefields. No. Oh. And she'll launch into, like, small stories about, like, the kids and where they're going to school in, in town now, that they've been accepted into some of the, the various different points there. Uh, her pride at the people of Vogler, those ha that have gone to volunteer for the Kalamon military. And she hangs a lot on, on Darrett. Um, Darrett has just grown so fast, so quickly. He's... It's like looking at Becklin all over again. He came by. Um, he apparently arrived late last night, and he came by this morning when they were heading out. A large column of soldiers coming west. How did he look? What What did he say? He looked grim. He's always so ready to smile, but he looked... So stern, so stony. His smile, he tried, but even with the children, it never really touched his eyes. And he looked... <sighs> as if he was traveling to an end of some kind. Just so serious. I know the battles will be hard. The Kalamon military will be there to protect him, and... Oh, well. I do want to thank you again for keeping an eye on him, helping him and guiding him. I do think he will make a great Salomnic Knight one day, when he gets the opportunity. I believe so, too. You have all done well to raise these kids, as they say it takes a village. <laughs> it's all we have left now. These three buildings and our people. Maybe one day we'll go back to Vogler, but from all reports, it's fully lost. The place is overrun, the dragon army, and they're using it as a base of some sort now. An outpost, really. Don't know if we'll ever go back. Our future generations may just be of Kalamon. Which, it is a nice city, but it's no Vogler. I will be sure to add both Derrett 
add Bogler to my prayers. If the gods are indeed listening, <laughs> they would listen to you. Now, finish up your tea. I know you've got plenty to work on. I'm going to try and sneak you out of here before the kids notice that you're not busy anymore. Oh, yes, and with that, you'll watch as Raina reaches for this little pouch uh, full of candies and kind of just, like, slides it into her hand. You like, did have candies. For later. <laughs> oh. And she'll, like, as you finish and stand, she'll give you a big hug. Thank you for checking in on us. We'll be all right. They take good care of us here. You take good care of yourself. And dare it if you can, and the others... I worry about you gallivanting off all over the place, putting yourselves in such dangerous situations. The gods have blessed me with good comrades. Maybe hmm. even, dare I say, friends. <laughs> well, don't get too far ahead of yourself, huh? I'm sure. Yes, Steph. <laughs> Ravenna would probably punch me for saying that. In jest, of course. Of course. <laughs> oh. Go get some rest. You look tired. I don't mean that in any disparaging way. You just look exhausted. Gods ask much of us these days. She nods and gives you a small wave as you exit, heading back into town. And we'll find our compatriots meeting up together, more than likely, back in their quarters. We arrive into the small, quiet room. You would note that the fire has been set here. It is burning happily by one of the uh, the servants of the tower, or the, the castle, excuse me. And you would note something. A small piece of parchment sitting underneath the base of the pot plant on the table. I guess Svartal would probably notice it first as he would look at the plant. Yeah. Plant looks well taken care of. Even when you were gone, Good. it seems that someone was taking care of it. <laughs> Good. Uh yeah. There's a there's a flag here. I don't know what the flag means. Flag. It's a piece of paper. <laughs> you flag, pull it out. Paper. It has things on it that I don't understand. Uh a note, perhaps? Or a letter? Yep. Here you go. Hand it over to Ravenna. Ravenna, um, in what seems to be rather like curt writing, very like solid lettering, no fancy flourishes or flowers or anything like that. It just says friends on the front, uh, and inside is a very short note. It's from Derek. It reads. Come at once. Bacarus is leading us to ruin at Steel Springs. He's the commander of this mission, and I cannot disobey. I'll do what I can, but I will need your help. What's it say? We're leaving, and soon. We are. Ain't no rest night. for the <laughs> Are we planning to leave and push through the night? Well, what, what exactly does it say? It's Ravenna will. Hardly. You, you read it out Read it me? out loud. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Svartal starts walking outside immediately. <laughs> <sighs> Any any thoughts? If we do this like above the table, I assume we might we're probably gonna take like you're, levels you're cutting of out for me again. I, I think. Oh, I'm uh, so sorry. <laughs> I, I'm not sure what's happening there. It's when sorry. I unmute myself. I don't know why. Um, oh, okay. The I assume above the table. If we do this, we're gonna take like a level of exhaustion. Potentially, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Is Derek worth a leveling massage? 
Yeah, uh, talk, Razik, yeah, Razik, do you have any input on uh, this? I would say, I mean, it might not be the best if we, if we want to show up and help, we might need to be, you know, fully arrested to do so. I don't know if us charging blindly out into the dark, because not to mention, there may be troops from the Dragon Army moving around out there, and we don't want to stumble into them. So perhaps if we wait until mo early morning and set off then. How long Probably is the it safer thing. again? It is 30 miles away. You can roughly travel 20 miles a day. But Steel Springs... What about Springs, on horseback? That's the same. It's just uh. less tiring. Uh. I think, yeah. Horseback travel is, like, slightly faster. It's not really fast. I don't know if we're going to make it. Y'all know Smirtle's vote, but he would miles. he would serve to democracy. Yeah, because if we leave now, you said it's 24 miles, right? Uh, it's 30 miles to get there. You can travel about 24 miles in the day. Okay, so if we leave right now, uh, we wouldn't get there until... A, 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 day, a day is eight hours. Sorry, let Days me... Like, let me. Yeah, so in eight hours, you can travel 24 miles. Okay. So you could be there if you traveled overnight an hour or two after dawn. Okay. Uh, I if guess... you wait, uh, you would be there in the evening the next day. She will grab uh, her quiver, put it on her back, sling her bow around her back, and she's grabbing her glaive. She goes, we don't have the time. By the time we arrive there, it could be bloodbath. Or worse. And I really don't have any intention of trying to find his corpse. I don't even know if I... And she cuts herself off from finishing that sentence because... Yep. So, Razik, everyone else is making for the doors. Well, <laughs> Razik will just go, Ah, fuck it, I'll just leave it. I'll go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, you... go to... Nah, I'll fall. What would wanna... Talonor say? What would Talonor say? Talonor say, you're all fools! <laughs> yeah. You're all fools! Why would you do this? Um, or, a, well, he made his choice. Or like... <laughs> <laughs> I am going to stay here. Uh, yeah, do you want to stop in uh, in Tatina's uh, workshop, maybe, and get yourself some espresso? Yes. <laughs> It'll keep yes. you up. It'll keep you up, Razik. I don't know, that's borrowed energy, though. Like, you pay for it, it like... You're gonna be I'm paying. Not, I'm, <laughs> we're gonna pay anyways, because gonna... we're gonna get the exhaustion, right? So, like, unless yes. we get two things of exhaustion, if we have the... Exp if, like... No, it, it's... You have the coffee. More a, jo a joke than anything else about you being able to travel through the night. Well, I'm thinking, I'm trying to, like, mid-max this, like, this travel, because this is gonna <laughs> suck. Yeah. So, I mean, that, this is the thing, right? Like, you've already traveled all day. So the, yeah. you're going when you go down to the stables, they're gonna you're gonna have to request fresh horses because the other ones have run all day already, and then you're gonna head out and travel for eight hours straight through the night to hopefully arrive at Steel Springs by morning. I literally have a four-hour drive after this, and this is like listening to this. <laughs> right, this like is, this like, logistics exhausting. is yeah, it's like, terrible, yeah, right? Listening to this, I was just mm -hmm. like. I'm tired already. Like I'm ready for a nap. Like <laughs> so, it's it seems though we have made a decision. We yes. gather our things, take Derrett's letter, we go get fresh horses, saddle up, and we begin our ride through the night to Steel Springs. Okay. Um, Is that that's okay, where Eleanor? we're. Yeah, that's where we're going to end, and Talonor doesn't get to say shit about it. Uh, <laughs> because the, the next thing that we're getting into is going to be much larger and take much more time. Mm -hmm. um, so to ensure that everyone gets out on time today and has safe travels, cats, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to end that here, and hopefully Talonor is with us for the, the next one. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today on a, a bit of a, a downtime and investigative episode uh, and learning more about the... Uh, draconic enemies that we have and their potentials there. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.